This is the largest trade hub in EVE Online, a massively multiplayer spaceship game with by far the most realistic financial system in the virtual world. And this is downtown Manhattan, the largest trade hub in, well, the real world. These two regions of concentrated commerce have more than you might expect in common, and what has happened before in this virtual world might be a very good indication of what ends up happening here in the real world. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. In our last video in this series, we explored how EVE Online's massive in-game wars were financed, and, at a cost of hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars, why they were financed. Now, a couple people reached out to me at the end of that video and said I missed a very interesting detail the battle over the in-game tax havens. You see, when a financial system is as realistic as the one in EVE Online, it comes with the same unfortunate realities as well. Most notably, needing to work hard to make in-game money, currency inflation, and of course, paying taxes. So, it's time to learn how money works, and take a look at the different taxes players in EVE are expected to pay, how they avoid paying them, and what this can teach us about the fate of New York. So, to start off with, there are the taxes that we explored in our last video that are paid by the individual players on their income and paid to the corporations they are a member of. These are the taxes that in turn go on to fund the wars that make the newspaper headlines, so most of the members of these corporations have no problem paying them. Even if they do decide they'd rather not pay these taxes, it's as simple as finding or indeed forming a corporation with a 0% tax rate. Simple enough. There is, however, a type of tax that is far less popular among the players of this game, because it's much harder to avoid and doesn't get used to fund these epic space battles. These are the sales taxes. Every day, millions of transactions take place in the trade hubs across this virtual galaxy, as everything from basic supplies to huge speculative positions are bought and sold back and forth between the players of the game. Every time this happens, a percentage of the sale is taken out and paid to the Secure Commerce Commission, which is a not-so-subtle in-game equivalent of the American Securities and Exchange Commission. The only difference is that in the real world, the SEC is funded by a tiny fraction of a percent of these transactions, about $22 per million dollars in sales. In EVE Online, however, the transaction tax was around 2%. This by itself is pretty steep, and it's actually one of the biggest ways the game takes money out of active circulation. But things got really serious when this tax was doubled to more than 5% a few years ago. There were two important things that came out of this. The first was that suddenly a video game was making headlines for tax hikes, which is something I suppose. But more importantly, the financial elite of EVE needed to find a way around these new onerous tax rates. This was the solution. This is a citadel, a space station that players in the game can construct and place almost anywhere in space. The largest of these structures can house their own market exchanges, which means it was possible for the players to build these structures on the outskirts of established trade hubs and undercut the new 5% tax rate being charged in the established centers. This worked really well, but it still caused a few problems. The first was the inevitable race to the bottom. These stations aren't cheap, per se, but compared to the potential revenue they could generate as centers of exchange, their upfront cost was practically a non-factor. This meant that everybody with a few billion is to spare threw up these structures everywhere across the galaxy, and started competing with each other. Through the magic of free market competition, this pushed the tax rates in the citadels from just undercutting the 5% charge in the public stations to practically zero. This caused a lot of problems for these would-be market overlords, because at a 0% cut, they were making no money at all, and couldn't afford the ongoing expenses required to run these stations. This meant that most people just let their stations fall into disrepair, but some stuck it out with the promise that if they were the last man standing, they could raise their rates once again and make insane profits off this market. In the real world, we call this anti-competitive pricing, which in brief means pricing your product cheaply. Not because it makes good business sense to do so, but because it makes it impossible for people to compete. And, once you have no competition for an essential service, like let's say trade, then you can charge whatever you like. Now, in the real world, this particular business practice is illegal, and many major corporations have seen themselves in court for exactly this reason. However, as we've seen before, EVE Online has an almost totally unregulated financial system, so anti-competitive pricing is completely fair game. But, there is one other thing that's allowed in EVE that's not so kindly looked upon in the real world, and that's shooting down your competitors' establishments. 
What this meant was that the real solution to this market competition problem was simply to forcefully remove the competition. Eventually, only the largest and most powerful alliances in the game were able to maintain these structures, and a price equilibrium was established at around 1% for every transaction. This was still more than enough for these empires to maintain and defend these facilities while making a healthy profit. In fact, these private trade hubs have become so lucrative that competition for them has been a major driver of the wars that we explored in our last video. Now, for a video game, this is great. Spaceship shooting at spaceships is what it's all about. But in the real world, governments wouldn't be quite as keen on seeing Amazon Express shipping some heavy artillery fire to Walmart because it happened to steal some of its customers. This means that more subtle measures are taken, but it also means that competition is an ever-present issue for small businesses, big businesses, and even governments. And here's where we can use EVE Online to teach us a lesson about that real-life trade hub. You see, New York is a lot like the old public trade station. It's home to the largest financial center in the world, but also some incredibly high state income taxes. For this reason, the state has seen an increase in its wealthiest residents moving just outside the state lines to New Jersey. New Jersey's state income taxes are far lower than those levied in New York, and it's still close enough to Manhattan that commuting in and out every day is possible. This exodus of wealthy New York workers across the Hudson is part of the reason why New Jersey has recently become the wealthiest state in the US. But this causes a lot of the same issues that we saw in EVE. The process of wealthy individuals moving to more accommodating regions is called capital flight, and there are a number of reasons why it can happen. The most common is to move away from poor living conditions. Wealthy people in nations with high levels of political instability and crime have been willing to spend millions of dollars to set up their families in more stable environments. Think of examples like people fleeing South Africa and more recently wealthy Chinese business leaders moving to nations like Canada, Australia, and the States. The other big driver of capital flight is to avoid tax, although it must be recognized that this is far less common, especially when it involves moving from one country to another. But moving from one state to another, especially when that other state is only a few miles away, well, that's a different story. It's much easier. You don't need to change jobs, you are still amongst your friends and family, and your kids might even still be able to go to the same schools. Now, people moving just outside the commercial centers to avoid paying taxes sounds familiar, right? And so too are the problems. For starters, it becomes harder and harder to maintain public services when the people you are providing those services for are paying taxes in a different state. This means that governments are either forced to run budget deficits or tax the remaining residents more. But if they tax the remaining residents more, this will only accelerate the process of people leaving to avoid said taxes. Of course, the backup solution of waging war on the competition probably wouldn't go over too well here in the real world. but. That's okay, because EVE can also give us a glimpse into the future of what happens when you just let this play out. Everything in this video game happens at a much faster pace than it does in the real world, where moving from New York to New Jersey might take a family months of selling their home, buying a new home, convincing their partner, and all that fun stuff. Moving across the borders in EVE might take a few minutes of travel in a spaceship. And what we have seen from this miniature model of the real world is more or less what you would expect. Most business is still done in the old trade hubs, and sure, it has lost some revenue to the low-tax competitors. But at the end of the day, customers from all over the galaxy, or maybe just the planet, know that this is the place where business gets done, and it's a big ask to convince those same customers to go out of their way just so you can enjoy slightly lower taxes. Of course, for really high-value deals, you can pass some of these savings along to them, but more often than not, Tradition and convenience trumps these marginal savings. So, good news New York, a spaceship video game says you're gonna be alright, and you can breathe a sigh of relief. And even if that all fails, perhaps New York can save all of its problems by taking a cut of the profits its Federal Reserve Bank makes. Go and watch our video on how the Fed became the most profitable entity in history to find out if that's something we should be worried about. Or, if that's too frightening for you, then go and check out our other video on how the wars in EVE Online are financed. If you do enjoy these videos, be sure to like and subscribe to keep on learning how money works.